Treasury Star Parade. <laughs> Produced under the personal direction of William A. Bacher, with Fulton Osler as our master of ceremonies, David Brookman and the Treasury Orchestra, and the stars of the Broadway hit Claudia, Phyllis Saxter, and Robert Shane, in Malcolm Meacham's adaptation of an original drama by Fulton Osler and Ruth Lavere, entitled Beyond Recall. This is Fulton Arsler, ladies and gentlemen, in another of the programs brought to you by the Treasury Department. Today we present the story of a boy and girl in love. You're probably already thinking there's nothing new about that, and of course you're right, except there is one thing new. There's a war. There's a world in ferment, a titanic struggle between two ways of life. One, a way of life where speech is free. The other, a secret, dark way of life where your slightest confidence can be turned against you and cost you your freedom, your happiness, your very life. Oh, yes, love stories today can be different. If you don't believe me, listen. That's my favorite song. Mine, too. Happy? Mm-hmm. Having fun? Oh, yes, wonderful fun. Me, too. Like this place? Crazy about it. Crazy about the place, crazy about the people, and... Mm-hmm. Crazy about you. Do you mind? Personally, I'm for it. Well? Well, what? Who do you love? Peggy. Who do you love? Ted. Then everything's rosy. How about a kiss? Right here, with all these people watching. I'll sneak one by your ear, like this. That was nice. Oh, Ted. What, darling? It's all so perfect, everything. You and me, and the music, and the night. Being here in your arms. Why does it ever have to end? Why can't we go on like this forever? Just you and I, dancing like this forever? It would be nice. Let's. (laughs) Let's. <laughs> You're crazy, darling. But if we can't do that, we can always remember. Always. That's one thing that nothing in the world, nothing can take away from you. A perfect memory. Ooh, you sound so grim. Do I? Ted, what's the matter? It's a quarter of twelve, Peggy. So what? The evening's only a puppy. No, the evening's all over. It was a Cinderella evening, all music and stardust in your eyes, and then promptly at the stroke of twelve, back to the reality of the chimney corner and the ashes. Ted, what are you talking about? There's a war, darling, and I'm a soldier. You mean your leave's been cancelled? More than that. Look, honey, it's going to be tough for both of us, but we'll have to take it, like thousands of men and girls all over America. Where are you going, Ted? I don't know. I got the telegram just before dinner. I have to be back at camp at five in the morning. And after that... After that, I don't know. Does that mean they're sending you away? Yep. Why didn't you tell me sooner? And spoil our perfect memory. Oh, of course. Where will they send you? I don't know. You mean you can't tell? No, darling, I I don't know. Sometimes they tell you just before you shove off. Sometimes they don't. Ted. Ted, I've got to know where you are. I couldn't stand it not knowing. I go crazy. Every boat that got sunk, I'd think. And every battle that was lost. I I couldn't stand it. You'll have to, darling. There's no way of my letting you know. Yes, Yes, there is, Ted. Now, please, darling, you know... A high school code, remember? Yes, but now look, honey... Nobody knows how to wake up but you and me, and it's so simple. Nobody will guess in a million years. It's against the rule. If all Miss Kramer in study hall couldn't figure it out, nobody could. You're crazy, darling. No, no, I'm not. You could even write it on a postcard. Promise me, Ted. Please, Ted, please say you will. Well, if I can find out before I leave... You can, I... I know you can. Promise me, Ted. All right, darling. If I can find out, I'll let you know. Feel better now? Lots. We've got three minutes more of dancing, and then I have to go and... Ted, no matter what, remember I love you. And I love you too, my darling. You bet your life I do. Peggy! Peggy, where are you? Here, Mother. Peggy, I wish you'd go upstairs for a minute. 
Oh, Peggy, you've been crying again. Please, Mother. But, darling, that doesn't do any good. You'll just make yourself sick. I, I can't help. Well, I wish you could see yourself. Your eyes are all red and your nose is red and shiny and, and your lipstick's all worn off. It's a pity Ted can't see you now. Mother, please. What do you think Ted would think about all this? Oh, I, I guess he wouldn't like it very much. But it's been three weeks and not a word from him. Well, darling, if he hasn't written, there must have been good reason. But he promised me. Then he will. Now, stop worrying about him. Come and help me. Something to do will keep your mind off yourself anyway. Yes? Who is it? A letter for you, Miss Peggy. I thought you might want it in a hurry, so I brought it right on over. A letter uh-huh. for me? Oh, Mother, you don't suppose. My dear. Give it to me, John, quick. Oh, Mother. This is the oh. one you've been waiting for? Oh, yes, your lamb, John. Thanks a million. Not at all. I just sort of reckon that maybe it was. Oh, Mother. It's from Ted. Well, don't just stand there looking stupid. Open it and read it. Oh, yes, of course. Peggy, darling, I've been thinking of you all day, so I thought I'd drop you a little note. It's been a long time since we... since we... Well, go on. What's the matter? Anything wrong, Peggy? No, Mother. I have to sort of figure this part out. It's in code. Code? Yes, our high school code. Oh, I've got it. You've got what, darling? I know where he's going. I know where Ted's going. Well, now I hope you're happy. Oh, I am. I am. I'll answer it. If it's Ted's mother, give her my love. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Holmes. What? Oh, I am happy. I just got a letter from Ted. Yes, of course he's all right, and I... Well, I mean, you're his mother, but... Oh, I'm so happy. Where did he write it from? Why, from Boston. Boston? But why is he in Boston? Where are they sending him? I I promised him I wouldn't tell anyone. But you're his mother. I guess you have a right to know. He's going to Iceland. Iceland? But, Peggy, how did you know... They aren't allowed to tell, are they? No, but well, he wrote me in our high school code. Hey, Mom! Shh, be quiet, Helen. High school code? How do you mean, Peggy? It's a silly code we used in high school. But please don't tell anyone, Mrs. Holmes. I promised you. Iceland. I... It seems so far well, away. What I... are you talking about? Peggy just got a letter from you Ted. Won't tell... No, of course I won't tell anyone. Of course not. Oh, Ted? Maybe I shouldn't have t- told you, but you are his mother. Of course, my dear. I won't tell a soul. Thank you. I feel so much better now, knowing where he is. Why don't you come over and have lunch with me tomorrow? Oh, I'd love to. When? About one. We can talk. Just you and I. Yes, of course. I'll be there. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. What about Ted? He's going to Iceland. He wrote and told Peggy. Well, how could he? The letters are all censored. Well, they use their old high school code. I suppose one of those childish things they worked out when they were in school. Iceland? Well, I'll be darned. Well, what are you all dressed up for? Uh, I've got a date with Bill for supper. Oh, you have, have you? I don't suppose you could have let me know before I did the shopping and everything. Oh, Mother, for heaven's sakes. We're going out to dinner and then up to the Pines to dance. You can expect me when you see me coming. No, honest, Bill, it's true. Peggy got a letter from Ted written in that silly code they used to use in high school. Yeah? He said he was sailing from Boston for Iceland last night. Iceland? Yeah, that's a hot one. Yeah. Hey, I wish you'd make up a code so I could keep track of you. No kidding, Joe. Helen told me last night. Ted's whole division is being convoyed to Iceland. They sailed last night. Yeah? How did Helen know? Oh, he wrote her a letter. It was in some sort of a goony code they used to use to pass notes in high school so the teacher wouldn't catch on. You get it? <laughs> and they shoved off last night. The whole division? Yeah, that's right. Terrific convoy stuff, you know. Waiter, may we have our check, please? Yes, madam. My dear, just think of it. I think it's as sweet as can be. Those two kids remembering the code from their high school days. And he told her the entire convoy was leaving Boston last night. Yes, a whole division. They're going to Iceland. Imagine. Your check, madam. Oh, thanks. Two sixty-five. That's right, madam. Here you are. And this is for you. Thank you, madam. Is Heinrich? Yeah, yeah. Tell 72 to meet me in the usual place in 15 minutes. I have an important message. Yeah. Listen carefully, so you will get it all straight now. Contact at once by radio the UZ214 and the U45. 
At once. There's no time to lose. Number 72 reports the convoy left Boston last night. If we hurry, the position can be determined within a few hours. Have you got it all straight? Listen, and I go over it again once. Yes, this is U-45. Tell 72 we have sighted the convoy. We are now in position. Air Captain, rain! Prepare torpedo to fire. Yes, U-45 still calling. Congratulate number 72 for me. We caught up with the convoy in the exact position reported. Oh, good evening, Lieutenant Martin, sir. Good evening, Holmes. Out for a walk? Yes, sir. Thought I needed a little air. It uh, gets awful close down there sometimes. Yes, I know what you mean. I'll be glad when we get this convoy to Iceland myself. It's too damn quiet up around here to be healthy. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Oh, what's that? What? Off to the left. You can just see it in the moonlight. Where? There. God, it... It's a submarine. A submarine? Captain! It's a submarine! Reverse engine! Submarine to starboard! Reverse engine! Submarine to starboard! Here it comes! Reverse engine! My God, we're too late! Man the lifeboats! Man the lifeboats! That's my favorite radio orchestra. What time is it, Mrs. Holmes? Why, nearly five now, Peggy. Well, I've got to be getting home. I promised Mother I wouldn't be late for dinner. Mm, what is that you keep singing, Peggy? Oh, it's just a song Ted and I like. I wonder where he is now. They must be there by this time, wouldn't you think? Yes, I'd think so. It's been almost three weeks. I should imagine you'd be hearing from him almost any day now. Oh, now stop it. You'll get me all excited. I can't wait. <laughs> yes? Who is it? Western Union. Telegram. Western Union? What do you suppose... Telegram? For whom? Mrs. Robert Holmes. She live here? Yes, I'm Mrs. Holmes, but... Sign here, please. Yes. Thank you. How much, young lady? What is it? Something important? I haven't read it. I'm all shaky. You open it. Why, of course. What does it say? No. What does it say? Let me see it. War Department regrets to inform you Private Theodore Holmes lost at sea August 14th. No. No, he can't be. No, he can't be dead. He can't be. Don't. Don't. If it had to be, it had to be. But why? Why did it have to be Teddy? Why? Why? Because you talked. Talked and sacrificed thousands of lives. You talked. That's why. Talked. 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 heard the expression, talk is cheap, but you've seen that it can be mighty costly, too. Wagging tongues, dropping just a few careless words in a thoughtless moment, can sign the death warrant of thousands in our armed forces. So if you know something, keep it to yourself. When you feel tempted to speak out of turn, as we all do, just put a war stamp on your tongue. And remember, we must have money to win the war. You can do your share by investing as much as you can of your income every week or every payday in United States Treasury war savings, bonds, and stamps. Save to save our country. It is our country. Keep it ours. (laughs) 